a lot of times I think we just want it to be when it comes to the word of God, it's like, okay, let me put my prayer request in this Get the morning out. and <laughs> bing, bang, boom, try the microwave is there. Hey, Jesus here. Hallelujah. Welcome back to the Abundant Life. <laughs> you never know what's going to come out of your mouth right now. You can either be real sarcastic or <laughs> I just always am prepared. Swimming I, in I, abundance. I prepare my table in the presence of my person who can speak some really nutty stuff about me. But it's all good. It's always positive. It's always positive. Living the dream, babe. Living Amen. the dream. Amen. And that's Amen. what our topic is today. Yep. We're talking about how to achieve your dreams. And it may sound like far out there, whatever, but I think, you know, when I'm talking to people sometimes that some people don't even have dreams. And that's something that you're like really good about when we're like having conversations maybe with people that we've just met or whatever. You ask them, well, what's your dream? It's like you're always putting people on the spot to kind of make them think and make them, you know, have conversation instead of just, yeah, the weather's really good today, huh? A little windy out there. You, you like to get deep with people. How you doing? You, you know? Real good. And some people but, don't even answer you. <laughs> well, just, that's the you point: know. is that sometimes people have no dreams. Right. So that's what we want to talk about today: is you know how to basically get a dream. And there's some of you that have had dreams, but because those dreams didn't become reality, you basically just put them to the wayside, and it's like. You just almost have forgot about them. Or if you do think about them, you, you almost get irritated or mad or it's like, you know, be like, why God? You know, it's like, why is this not happening? Why did that not happen? You, know, you can go through all those scenarios and those are all natural, I think, feelings. But what we want to talk about today is, you know, what the word has to say about dreams and give you some advice and some tips on how you can achieve your dreams. And that's what the Bible talks about here is like, not only does God want to give you your dreams, but he says, let, let you imitate those people that have had dreams. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're gonna to share today with you too, is dreams that we had, dreams that came to pass, or dreams that we've had, and we're in the process of going through those dreams, because it's a process. You know, a lot of times I think we just want it to be, when it comes to the Word of God, it's like, okay, let me put my prayer request in this Get the morning, bottle out. <laughs> and bing, bang, boom, try the microwave is there. Hey, Jesus here, hallelujah. But sometimes, you know, Things obviously can be accelerated supernaturally. And we teach a lot about that when we get in our financial classes about how God can accelerate your finances, not only the revenue coming in, but to pay off your debt or to completely eliminate debt. Um, but in all those things, there's always a process. Right. There's always some type of process and it's gonna take some time. Seed, yeah. time, harvest. harvest. Best thing that you can put all that trust back into. So you have a need, so a seed. That's a different teaching, but that was free credit. <laughs> They're not going to charge anything for that. So before we get too far off, go ahead and kick us off with Ephesians 3.20 out of the Amplified. Another really good one. It's just a staple. Ephesians 3.20 Amplified. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. Okay, so the reason why I like the Amplified is that the Amplified parentheses portion of this super blindly more than we are beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams. Beyond your dreams. Beyond. Beyond your dreams. And you know, the other translations don't have that. Mm. You know, it's about what you can think more than what you can desire, whatever the version may be. So I like this one because it has dreams and it has prayers. So whatever you're praying, God says, I want to give you more. Whatever you're dreaming, God says, I want to give you more. And that's the abundance of God. And what we talk about many times, the reason why we call this the abundant life, because we're always sharing about the abundance of God. Jesus and John 10, 10 said, I came to give you life and give you two more abundantly. Right. So we're teaching you about the abundance Jesus said that he wanted you to have. And before we even start or get into this even further, I just pray that all of you, all of your eyes would be open to your good. In Jesus name Amen. because sometimes you are living your dream but you're so blinded to the one thing that you can't have that you're not enjoying the one thing that you've already been believing for and have so I just pray that you would enjoy that in its fullness Amen. Hmm, that was a word yeah when, and I was just thinking about this this morning about you know 
people that complain. It's like, you can go to a fine restaurant, it can be a Michelin restaurant, five star, whatever you want to call it, and you can have all this food prepared and you can be with your family and your friends and just a great time. And then there's one little thing that didn't taste good. <laughs> and you're going to base the whole experience the whole on experience that. Well, I just that didn't one, like the yeah. way that cheesecake tastes. I like my strawberry. They didn't have strawberry. I didn't get strawberry. You know, you can go on and on and on about the one little thing or go to the IMAX and you've got gazillions of pixels on there. And there's the one pixel out of the gazillion that's black. Well, I, you know, they had that one pixel black. It's like, <laughs> you want to complain about that? Whole point is, like Andrew was saying, look at the goodness in things. Right. Don't pick apart. And that's what I think right now what we have going on in this world is people want to look at just the one little thing, like just make a big explosion out of it. So Choose life. Yeah, back to Choose that, that one, Deuteronomy. So Gosh. the other thing that I want you to get out of this is that God is saying that I dare you. Right. I dare you. It's like me saying, I double dog dare you to try that against me. What am I saying? It's like, I got great confidence in whatever you think you're going to do. I'm saying, I dare you. I can because, do better. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, uh, I can kick your butt. It's like, okay, I dare you. Come on. I double dog dare try to kick my butt. It's like, I got confidence that you ain't going to do that. <laughs> you know? And what God is doing is saying, I got confidence that I can do it. So I'm going to dare you exceedingly abundantly above all you dare ask or think I dare you. I love that. Isn't God good? He dares you. I Amen. dare you to dream big. Okay, so let's talk about the definitions of a dream. Because sometimes I think good. that the worldly perception of dreams almost can be perceived as something negative. Like if, I, if you, somebody says something, he's a daydreamer. Are they saying something good or are they kind of saying something negative about that person? Well, it's the way, it's the way you say it. Okay, well, if I said it this way, she's just a daydreamer. Well, just by doing that with your face. Well, that's my whole point. I tried to make it, <laughs> tried to put some expression to it, you know? Like, he's a daydreamer. Well, yeah. You're right. It's different. It's your expression. You're, most of the time it's like, well, you know. That kid just don't ever get anything done. I just don't know why he can't do this. You know what? He, he's just daydreaming all the time. So it's like that can be see, perceived as being something negative. So I wanted to break down the actual definition of a dream so we can get more understanding. So read that, what we got there, definition of a dream. A visionary creation of the imagination. Okay, so what I want you to get out of that is the imagination. So in order to have an, a dream, you've got to use your image maker. You've got to use your imagination to see that thing. And you're using your imagination every second of every constantly hour of every day of every minute. And you have to almost stop yourself sometimes and look and say, what am I imagining? What are you right imagining? Now? If, and you can tell it by your outward behavior. So even if, like if we're in our office working and I've got some weird look on my face, you're always like, what are you thinking about right now? <laughs> oh, and then you have to like stop because you can get in a tailspin of negative thoughts just by the expression, but you're always imagining and you're always thinking something throughout the day. Well, the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So sometimes you can be involved with somebody in a conversation, whether they're a Christian or not. But I can have Christians, oh, I love God, and I'm faithful, and I do this, and I believe God. But what's coming out of their mouth does not line up with the Word of God. And I'm not talking about cussing, but just talking doubt, unbelief, talking about just the bad health and all this about it and that, you know. So what I know is that that's what's in their heart. And if that's in their heart, they're probably using their image maker, their imagination think to think on that thing and roll over because once they're doing that, that's what gets down inside of them. And, and then that's, that's what, what comes, comes out, out of their mouth. Right. Sometimes I wonder, can we just put a recorder on just to see you can hear what's coming out of your mouth <laughs> for some people? Because sometimes people just don't know. They are so accustomed to talking negatively all the time. They really don't know what's coming out of their mouth until you actually yeah you got to be reminded i mean when we yeah. first got a hold on the importance you know life and death and the power of your tongue it's like we went through a process of like re retraining our minds renewing our minds with the word but also helping each other train it's like do you know what you just said it's like uh i'm i'm so i'm starving to death it's like are you really about the point of death? You ain't even missed a meal. You're just like an hour late. But you, we had to like help each other. It's like, oh yeah, you know, you almost have to 
retrain your mind to have a new vocabulary for it to line up. I have some friends where we have a tip jar where if you're cursing or speaking negatively, that dollar goes in there. Whether or not the tip jar is there, it's a mental thing. So every time, oh, another one, another one, another one, another one. So just always being mindful of what's coming out of your mouth. So the next definition is a state of mind marked by abstraction or release from reality. <laughs> Which is easy for a lot of people, I think. So it's like I think you, if you're just going to remove yourself from reality. Well, that's the whole point. It's like, you, you know, dreams really aren't based on reality. Because people say, you know, well, that dream's just not realistic. How are you ever going to do that? How are you ever? Let me tell you what. God says He wants to do bigger than your dreams. So it's like, if you're going to dream little, it's like, what do you even need God for? Like, if it's people say, oh well, yeah, that dream sounds realistic. I think you can achieve that. It's like. They don't need God then. <laughs> it's like if your dreams are that small that people think, well, that's realistic, honey. Oh, good for you. You're going to get all those things. It probably ain't a big enough dream. Interesting. So dream bigger. Okay, so how do we get these dreams to come to life? Read Hebrews 6 and 12 for us. Hebrews 6, 12 NIV. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. So Abraham was a great person here that we can, what it says here, to imitate, to imitate, to follow, to look at what they did and what happened in their lives. He's saying to imitate it, follow him. So Abraham had what? A dream to have a son, right? Mm -hmm. Him and Sarah. And so what God did was he got him out of the tent. He said, come out of the tent, look at the stars, look at the sand. And that's where, how your descendants shall be. So he had a dream of one. And what did God say? I want to give you a lot more. A number of the, the stars, the number of the sands, all this. He, he was trying to get his imagination off of one, that was two, off of one and on to yeah. abundance. Yeah. So how long did that take? Well, he also changed their names. Right. He breathed grace into them because you couldn't do it without his grace. And it took him what? 20 years or so? Almost 20 years. Almost 20 years. So there's a, there's a time period, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Sometimes, like we were talking about earlier, there's going to be a time period that you have to go through in order to see that dream come to pass. It's almost like people saying, oh, an overnight success. There is no such thing as an overnight success. There is so much, so many hours beneath that overnight success. <laughs> sure. Number one bestseller of children's money books so much work went into just getting it to that place on Amazon. So, you know, yay, congratulations, but wow. <laughs> that's just one step. <laughs> that's just one step to get into the end of the dream, but you know, you have to celebrate those steps you do. along the way. And there's three more books coming behind that. So it's just, but it's building and it's building and it's building and it starts with the idea, your imagination. Right. You imagine these characters. Right, and then, you know, I just want to give just a little more background. You're talking about the book, and by the way, this is Money is Easy. This is one of our, one of four children's books that we wrote. And so how this whole thing came to pass basically is God gave me this vision, this idea of doing this, and then I shared it with you. And then you're like, great, write the book. So I was like, I ain't an author. I ain't wrote a book. I can't hardly use spell check on the computers, let alone write a book. And so... How long did you keep encouraging me to write the books? A year? I don't know. It had to have been through the whole time of the money life that when you were teaching. So a year. Okay. So a year. So I'm just trying to break this down. Remember that we overcome him, that being Satan, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So we're given a testimony. We're not boasting on, oh, we're great authors or do this. We're boasting and we're giving glory to God for this and we're making also an example of who you can imitate. Just like you can imitate Abraham. It's like, okay, well, that's somebody in the Bible. Well, I'm giving you something right here that's happened in our days, in our time, that you can imitate right. and giving you examples. Because one thing I've always told my daughter in business is like, learn from my mistakes, just not by my successes. Because sometimes those can, the mistakes, not repeating the same mistakes. And they also <laughs> ask, can be even more, can even be any more important. So anyway, get the ideas. You're encouraging me for a year. You didn't write those books yet. You wrote those books yet. And then I was like, 
when do I have time? We're running a commercial real estate company. We got our ministry. We got our daughter and her company and all these things. Like, when do I have time? What am I doing? I'm making excuses. And then COVID hit. And then the no whole <laughs> world stopped. We we're in California then. It was like, nothing. The phone didn't ring. Nobody was emailing. Only for a couple of there, days. there was nothing going on. So she said, you got some time now? <laughs> so in two weeks, I wrote four books. And that was like what I would call supernatural acceleration to be able to write four books. And it just came out of me. And that's all I would say. Just throw up on paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it out. Write the characters. Just draw them as you see them. How, how, where do you want to live? All those things, whatever it may be you're dreaming yeah. for, just get it out there. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you did it. And you did it. And I just kept reeling more out of you. And then just kept putting the, the pieces in place. But there was a, it was a process. It was seed where you, the Lord spoke a word to you. You had a vision. You knew what to do. You got it out. And then there was time. And then through all that time on getting it all together and, you know, getting it in place and getting the characters built, then there was harvest and the harvest is boom, hits number one. For a guy who's never written anything, <laughs> <laughs> is now a best-selling author <laughs> for children's for, books. For a guy who could barely spell <laughs> in school, my mom used to say, you need to get that spelling going, you, you're a bad speller. And I was like, oh, I used to buy a company, used to be... Well, I'm going to have a secretary, so I ain't going to need to be able to spell. <laughs> Is that after they beat you over the head with the Bible? Yeah. Dyla, <laughs> you're gonna, if you don't spell oh, right, you're not going to succeed. <laughs> okay, now we're getting way off track The funny here. farm stories. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is, dream. dream. Dream big. Dream. God can exceed your expectations, and other things are even happening right now. Yeah, and another thing that you said was, and then the harvest came, but what we also did is we sowed seed to this. Yes. We planted seed in the kingdom of God. What do you mean by that? We sowed finances, we gave we money. Finance. We gave money to best selling Christian authors. I, I sowed money into them personally. I sowed money into their the ministries. ministries. We bought other, or put other money just into their basic ministries. We're sowing seeds into that. We bought books from other authors. It's like, we want people to buy these books to get it out. And it's about, you know, getting this out to the children of this world because there's so much junk going on that they're being bombarded with that we wanted to have something good, especially teaching about the finances. So. Well, that's the other thing is, um, you know, it wasn't about just, oh, I want to be a best-selling author. It's, we need to help the children of the world <laughs> understand how not to get in a money mess because we're the, we are a testimony of going bankrupt, broke, and being busted and disgusted by not having this message as kids being taught. So when your mind is focused on helping other people to grow and expand and increase, it's just like a, it's a flow. It's a flow you get into and God wants to super exceed that flow. That living water, like we had just talked about, is overflowing. He wants to, you to be in that place. And the only way you can do that is if you get into the flow and you're flowing with helping and giving and making sure other people are experiencing the abundant life that you are. It's just like you're saying, well, if I put your cup underneath my cup and it's overflowing, well, it's going out. And then my cup is overflowing and then that other cup is overflowing. So it's the same principle. Once you get in a flow, everybody's swimming in success. Amen. Amen. So let me ask you the question once again, what's your dream? Maybe you don't have a dream. Well, go and daydream. Ask God to deposit something into you. Maybe you have that dream already that has seemed like it's fallen away and it's never come to, come to life, never come to fruition. Then I'm praying right now for you that God is going to resurrect your dream. And I want to give you three quick points on how to achieve your dreams. Number one, daydream daily. Amen. Sit back, close your eyes, let your imagination, your image maker go to work. Just dream about it, right. see it. If you want believing to be to have a restaurant, see yourself receiving the award of the number one chef in the state or the nation or whatever it may be. If you're an athlete, see yourself stand on the podium on first place, whatever it is. If you're wanting to be an actor, see yourself with your Grammy, your Whatever. What else? Those words <laughs> like are? your Emmy or your Oscar. Emmy, Grammy is Emmy or your Oscar. <laughs> Whatever. You know, make a vision board. Put yourself holding those things. Put yourself seeing yourself in that restaurant. Whatever it is, start creating vision boards so that you can see it to help you with your imagination. And number two is to 
follow people, imitate people who have achieved their dreams. And support, like with, it's the same thing, like supporting their films or supporting their careers, supporting their followings by liking, subscribing and doing those kinds of things. You know, Amen. just being a support, however you can help pray for that person. Um, you know, there's so many ways that you can, that you can help be a support. And what's the third thing? And number three is to have faith and have patience. Keep standing on it. When the enemy tries to come about you, say, that ain't ever going to come to pass. That ain't ever going to work right. You say, no, I'm going to stand on the word of God. I believe that he's going to give me more than my highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. And I will see this dream come to pass in my life. Use your mouth. Use that as a tool to help to get that thing to come back. Call those things what Roman talks about to be not as though they were. Call those dreams into your life. Go to the elements, go to the table. I set before you a table in the presence of your enemies. Amen. That is the enemy coming against you saying it's never going to happen. And it is. If you have used your image maker and you have seen yourself doing it, God will surely bring it to pass. Amen. It's that patience. After patience has its perfect work, it will manifest. It will happen for you in Jesus' name. We Amen. just loose the angels to go now to bring forth even a glimpse of hope Amen. that you would get a call, you would get an, an email, you would get something that would confirm the very thing that you're believing for. We come into agreement where two and more touch and agree. It shall be done in Jesus' name. Till next time, peace.